Okay, so I'd like to start the group discussion with a little bit of a philosophical or psychological conversation um, about the experience of wearable technology. Um, and you know, you, you all work with people who have tried to wear these devices in their various forms. How do you find that people relate to their robotic prosthetics? Do you, do you find that they kind of quite quickly start to see the technology as part of themselves, part of their identity, or does that take a long time? Does it never happen? You're shaking your head now. <laughs> <laughs> so, most of the people I've worked with never really develop that true sense of embodiment with, with a prosthetic. Most of them will view it as a tool. They will use and abuse it. Um, they will find ways to repair it themselves, and they think of it <laughs> just as an, an addition. One of the bits of work we did was around sensory feedback. Mm. So uh, very rarely will a prosthetic include any kind of sensory feedback to the user about how hard, for example, a hand is gripping. Mm. Now, as an engineer, we always you know, we go very deep and technical, and we want to produce something that moves in the same way as a human hand. We did some studies where we spoke to, to individuals about their prostheses, and the feedback we got was, well, I can't feel it, so I don't trust it. And if I don't yeah. trust it, I won't play with my animals, and I won't play with my children. And so immediately, that, that any chance of kind of embodiment is, is lost if you don't, first of all, have trust. Mm. Yeah, that's really interesting, because I think so many things that we interact with in daily life do give us feedback, whether it's a games controller or my phone. And I, you start, I start to sometimes feel a little bit like my phone is an extension of me, myself. Like I will try and do gestures on a book or things that aren't my phone because it just sort of feels like it's so. But that gives me feedback. So yeah, that's, that's interesting that you highlight that as an important point. Um, um, yeah, so we did, uh, so our first study that we did with the third thumb in the plasticity lab was a five-day training study, uh, and we did, um, and that was uh, published back in 2021, and that was, uh, so we did five days of them training with the third thumb every day for two hours, and then they also took the thumb home with them. Mm. So they really started, over the, over the week, really started to kind of um, embody it. And what we, we, we didn't think that they might, um, but then we did actually test their embodiment levels across the five days um, and found that after the fifth day of using the third thumb, they did have increased embodiment over it, which I was quite surprised about. So we tested them with a questionnaire. Obviously, embodiment is quite subjective, but yeah, uh, yeah I, I was actually quite surprised by that. Um, and then, yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned trust because um, that is something that's very important, I think, with designing these kinds of technologies. That's why I kind of kept the thumb very soft, so it's always very compliable. Um, but actually, when I do kind of exhibitions with the thumb, I always use um, foot pads on the floor so people don't have to take their shoes off. And as someone's kind of passing the thumb over to the, the next person, they might still be standing on the foot pads, and yeah. so suddenly the person who's still wearing it, it moves without them controlling it, and they're suddenly like, oh my god, no, take it off. <laughs> so it is, yeah, very, it can very quickly switch as yeah. well. Yeah. Did you follow up with those people after, like, did they miss the thumb when it was gone? Yeah, yeah, mixed responses. Yeah, one girl kind of had to um, say, like, have a moment to say goodbye to it. Oh. I always felt a little bit bad taking it, <laughs> taking it back. Um, but yeah, this is obviously really crucial with the future of um, using these kind of technologies especially kind of in the workplace where it's not perhaps belonging to you and you mm. do have to return it at the end of the day. If you do kind of embody this technology, um, how does that kind of work you know, yeah. in your daily life? Yeah, yeah definitely. Milia, do you have anything to add? Yeah, not necessarily on embodiment itself, but on how much people use it. And I think this varies a lot from person to person. Like you were talking about earlier, someone born with one limb might feel more comfortable might have practiced using only one hand their whole mm. life and are more comfortable without one. Yeah. Um, and then again, it depends on you know, the level of the disability, like which prosthesis you can use because some of the more advanced tech is harder to use um, depending on how long your residual limb is. Right, yeah. So I know some people who, you know, they got the prosthesis, they love it. Like the more tech you can add, they enjoy that and they use it every day as much as they can. And then other people who are far more comfortable without one or using simpler tech because you know they trust it more, it's not gonna break on them. Mm. They, they're used to, you know, depends on what they're used to as well. So, so yeah, it varies. I mean, I know a veteran who has been using the same arm for like 40 years now and he's been fine with it until he found out that now he could get a more advanced one and he got really excited about that so it really depends on every single person's own situation of course yeah yeah 